So welcome, welcome everyone to um, Collab Friday event. We are testing Zoom setup because we got requests to be able to record our sessions for folks that want to come back to it or just couldn't, you know, um, join us during this time, whatever it is for you, whatever time of the day it is for you. Um, I am Sandra and I'm looking after community here and we are meeting here in a weekly cadence to share ideas, share our projects we're working on, ask questions, share some tips on working with, with Cohere API and, uh, and just hang out basically. So um, I'm super happy to uh, invite Adrian, Adrian as our um, co-host of today's session. He will be sharing his date idea generator app, um, which he has built using Cohere Generate and Streamlit. Hopefully we will get to see the flow of the app and also this could prove to be a useful example of how easily you can build a demo app using Cohere plus Streamlit. So um, listen up, let me know if you have any questions during the session in the chat section or wait until the end so that we can chat directly with Adrian. Um, yeah, Adrian, over to you. Hello, everybody. Um, yeah, so a perennial frustration, or okay, I work at Cohere. Um, Cohere makes language models. Language models are very fun to play with, but um, it's kind of a hassle to have to like you can't you can't play with them easily on hugging face you can't you can play with them easily on our playground but in order to do that you have to log in and then um kind of write the prompts or do do some stuff to format things properly so that the generations are nice and um it kind of exposes the guts of the work of the prompt engineering work uh to to the user so if you have like a fun prompt that consistently generates fun things uh, and you want to share that with people there was no easy way to or i was looking for for an easy and fun way to do that without logging into the playground and so i discovered or i was introduced to streamlit uh, and in particular streamlit share which lets you write very simple python and um lets you uh, turn that Python into a web page that you can share with other people and lets you do that super easily. And in particular, I discovered um, that they had a new functionality called pages, which lets you not only write a single web page, but a little thing like this. So um, each, each of these things is a, is a tiny, incredibly simple Python script. And you can just write a bunch of Python scripts in parallel, each with a simple prompt and um, <clears throat> that uh, can power a little functionality uh, that, um, that, that you can kind of show to your friends uh, if you, when, when the occasion arises. So uh, I made a, a thing for date generation because I've been thinking about uh, modern romance lately uh, for kind of reasons not relevant to this talk. Uh, but I thought it was fun to make like all, all of these things are um, just a single prompt engineered thing that I played around with in the in the Cohere playground, and uh, once I got kind of consistently good results from that, I just plunked them into um, the streamlet. And I'll show the code later. But right now, can we make this a little bit interactive? Can people uh, kind of um, tell me what uh, which of these things I should go to? And suggest a uh, an input, and then we can we can see if if it's fun. This is also nerve wracking because it's all kind of uh, uh, I have no idea what's going to come out. So yeah. Uh, also, I can't see what people are suggesting. So if people are actually suggesting things. Um, um, yes, they are suggesting, for example, haiku or gift ideas in the chat. Gift, Movie okay. dates. Let's do gift ideas. What what should the uh, name of the gifty be? What's the name of the gifty, guys? 
who who should we give a gift to? Sven with a V. Sven with a V. Yes. Okay, I I'm so scared. A chess set. Okay, Sven, congratulations. Uh, we'll send you a chess set. <laughs> and then, um, and then you just press another gift, and then it's easy. The awesome powers of Google. So Sven, you uh, you shall get kind of huge amount of knowledge. Uh, homemade granola and the freedom to do what you want. So uh, th the important thing is like, this is just like the way, the way this thing was made um, was just prompt engineering somewhat silly things. Um, and if you go to haikus, uh, it's, it's, a, it's the similar thing. So it's just like all prompt engineered. So Sven, what, what, or is there, is there someone else? Yes, Claire. Claire. Uh, I need a little, for this one, I think I prompt engineered everything with last names too. So can I have a last name? Cheng. Cheng. I'm so excited. <laughs> oh no. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. Well, that's part of the prompt engineering too. <laughs> um, Let's see. Okay, maybe this one will be kinder to Claire. <laughs> no. This is this is actually Streamlit's fault. I haven't figured everything else yet. Okay, so Claire's cocktail: two parts Macallan, one part Glenfiddich, because she's Scottish, clearly. Orange juice, lime, vanilla syrup, and then uh, garnish with a lime twist. So that's your cocktail, Claire. Congratulations. I'm thrilled. Um, Thank you so, tonight. <clears throat> yeah, nice. So, so all of these. Um, so it's. It's probably worth stressing all of these are just like incredibly simple to come up with so all it says is you kind of go into the cohere playground and you play around and you prompt engine or you you write some prompts that kind of produce um consistent results and then you just plonk them into streamlit and it's usually very few lines of code um do people want to go through more of these or should i go into the code and show people how easy it is Sandra, I will I will take my cue from you. What 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 do you want me to do? Um, so first of all, Stephen has a question. How many future oh. examples have you put them through? Um, um, yeah, that sounds that sounds like something to um, to show in the code. So um, we can. So let's see for the for the cocktail recipes. Um, really, not that much. So this is this is the entire prompt for the cocktail recipe one. Uh, so this is a cocktail generator for celebrities. This is actually a real cocktail. I found out the Marilyn Monroe, um, and this is a this is yeah this is just like I copy pasted this from the internet. So this is one prompt, um, and I started it with ingredients and a method, and there's another one which is the real one, the Charlie Chaplin ingredients and method, and I think this is also a real one, the Barack Obama ingredients method, and then um, the DT, and then in the code I just prompt people for the date name and then prompt dot replace date which is this with the date name and then just call generate incredibly simply and then write it out to streamlit and that's how that's how it pops out and so in this particular example um three three prompts in this one um four prompts in this one uh this one we haven't seen but it's uh, it's like you put in this was actually Sandra's idea. Uh, you put in Brad Pitt, Angelina Jolie, Brangelina. You put in J Lo and Ben Affleck, Benifer. Then you put in the names of two people, and then you have the model predict uh, what what your kind of celebrity couple name would be. And this one, oh the, yeah, this one is a bit messed up. Uh, we can we can do it later. Um, the date biographies one just two because these are much longer. So actually, the date biographies one is maybe worth going showing. Um, does anyone want uh, want to have a biography of them written? If so, I need your full name. I'll volunteer for this one. Jay Alamar, don't you actually have a Wikipedia? It, it might just have memorized. You're an American television host, YouTube personality, entrepreneur, and filmmaker. You began your career in broadcast journalism, working for SPN in New York. And then you oh. went to BuzzFeed. And then you got recruited by YouTube. So there you go. That's, uh, that's you. 
Congratulations. Awesome. I'm going to start using this now. Um, uh, Louis, Louis wants to know what his and your yours baby name would be. Please. Oh, God. So, <laughs> um, yeah, this one, this one is hard to prompt engineer. Louis okay, so with we... L E W. Oh. Yeah. Oh, really? That's a lovely one. Hector. <laughs> well, there you go. Um, yeah, this one, I forget how I prompt engineered it. Sometimes it's, oh, no, I remember how I prompt engineered it. Um, it's, uh, so these are, these are all real strange celebrity names, uh, except for this one. This one is normal. Uh, but um, Frank Zappa actually called his child Dweezil, and uh, Kanye obviously actually called his child North and uh, Gwyneth Paltrow actually called her child Apple. And um, sometimes the generations are have equally, equally bizarre. Let's see, let's go again. Russell, no, that's too normal. Bodhi, that's pretty strange. Noah, pretty normal. Brooklyn, pretty normal. Tranquility, this, this one is better. And yeah, maybe one extra thing to add would be using code.classify, which is our classify endpoint, to, to figure out if a name is strange enough to be worthy of being included. Like tranquility, like you could you could figure out using the model, like, oh yeah, Noah is too normal. Like Noah, you have you have Noah, normal name. You know, uh, L, I don't know about L actually. L is a not a common name, I think. But yeah, Russell and Hector, too normal. And then you kind of iterate through the generations until you find something that's adequately strange. Uh, and then you, you return that. So while we are at like unusual names, um, there's a question from Rakan on how is it doing with names from different cultures? Have you, have you checked it? Yes. No, I have not checked it. I mean, we can, we can try right now. Um, we can also, I think, yeah, maybe, maybe this would be an illustration of how relatively straightforward it is to um, to make modifications to the streamlet on the fly. Like we could just, I think, I haven't tried this in a while. We could just like, do people want to help me prompt engineer the model with, uh, with uh, names from different cultures and see what pops out? Let's do maybe that. The uh, Rakan, do you want to um, help us come up with some names? coming from different cultures. Um, hi, everyone. Um, I would go with, with my name as an example, coming from the Middle East or from Arabic culture, or maybe any, any famous name in, in different cultures, let's say Arabic with, with, with Muhammad or whatever, and some um, um, names from the um, English culture. Right, so you're suggesting like, but the, yeah. Um, the, 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 do, you, do you have a suggestion for the next one here that we can see kind of how that affects the generations? So Rakan and... So two names from, from the same culture or different cultures? Up to you, really. Like that, that's the part, part of the point I want to emphasize. It's like, uh, it's, it's very, it's kind of effortless and straightforward for, for you to experiment around with it. Like the space of yeah, possible maybe... experimentation. Is huge. Yeah, maybe you can tr try Rakan and Sarah, maybe. Okay. And what should uh, what should the, what should the name be of the baby? Name 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 the child. No pressure. Um. Maybe Ibrahim or Muhammad. Okay. Let's see how that changes things. Ah. Uh, okay. I just realized I have to delete these then. No. Okay, and now, um, now I think I just do this, and then sync changes, and then hopefully um, this app updates with the change that was just made, and then we can see what happens so maybe one way to make sure that the change did actually happen is to do this and make sure that it returns 
okay i guess it didn't but these wow the, the, this is excellent actually it's it's one of the famous names or i would say known names in, in, in arabic culture i see in general walid yeah well that's cool um yeah it is it is it is extremely li- relative i would say jibril yeah Ibrahim. Okay. Ah, here we go here we go excellent fun cool um uh you uh yeah one thing worth stressing is like you uh the you should totally kind of explore the models yourself like the um like i can i will try to make this whole thing um public and then you can just use it and make like any modification to the prompt would be interesting i think like not and not just from arabic or middle eastern culture you could go for south asian or east asian like it would be interesting to see how it deals with yeah, even even um, scripts from different languages, like sir, like alphabet or something. Um, yeah. Any other question about this or comment? Questions or requests to test it out. By the way, I'm that gonna too, yeah. send you the link so you can like play with it yourself. But also, um, if you want to. Play with any prompt right now with the sun. So, a quick question: You mentioned like a, a one possible Im- improvement to some of these is to have a, a classifier after the generation to um, manage maybe the quality. Uh, um, how would you take this, let's say, forward? How would you, so you, you explored maybe five, six uh, different ways. Um, is there one kind of improvement that you think is relevant across the different examples? Um, or if you were to do a V2 of, of, of this, what do you think is would um, you'd prioritize? A V2, I mean, I'm not sure what I'd prioritize. Um, probably, um, yeah, well, uh, probably, yeah, the, the, the classify thing for, for shaping the, the outputs, um, I might just make more, like, I, um, just like tack on more of these and, and have it be very comprehensive, uh, as, as, as things arise, I might, I might, Another V2 would just be not to make a V2 of this, but to make a just like a separate theme, like sports or something. Like, oh, I have I have you know a group of friends who who all whose like main thing to talk about is sports. Like, what if uh, you could turn like your name into a description of the type of like sport you're most like you put in you prompt engineer like Cristiano Ronaldo footballer, uh, and then like LeBron James basketball player, uh, and then and then um, you kind of go down that way and then you you say oh name of person and then you have the completion there it's like oh i'm a cricketer or something uh and that's one idea that's one page and then and, like the, the 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 limits to there there are kind of few limits to how 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 far you can push the models and how um i'm using you can make things so yeah and, but but obviously this is kind of very i'm very like yeah, I, I don't know how to how to push things further, and I mostly want suggestions for what I should do next, or what, mm-hmm. or I'm intrigued to see what other people could also build next. Yeah. So, um, actually, there is like um, a really nice question that I think is also a good suggestion for moving forward. I was thinking about a similar thing of uh, coming from Varun. Basically, he's asking if it's possible to um, build on top of the existing prompt um, to generate more relevant outputs, like. For the gift ideas, uh, there will be some questions like, what's their favorite hobby? What's their personality type? And then based out of these, you generate the actual gift idea. Totally, yeah. Um, so the way the way you would do it, so, um, so you have your prompt here and the prompt here just takes in, I'm stra- sorry, straight, this is somewhat strange and was mostly meant for, for me, but this is, this is the prompt for the gift idea. Uh, so, um, so the way you would do it is, uh, 
you have your your initial prompt the present for Vladimir should be uh, this you would change it to something like uh, like here is what the present for Vladimir uh, note that Vladimir is uh, somewhat aggressive and enjoys uh, warfare. Uh, and then uh, his present this. And then you kind of iterate down. And then at the, so let's say you have, you have a few of these and then you have the present for gifty should be, you turn that into note that gifty uh, is, and then kind of description of uh, Gifty's personality. And then you have a user. So here, here's the name of the Gifty. You can also have like uh, Gifty personality equals uh, this text input. Uh, actually, we can maybe just like make it now. Name of, or no, uh, what is Gifty? Older, um, uh, fun, fun. And then um, you like this is this is the rough flow. So here, Streamlit would create a text input like uh, this one. So he would create a, a little text input that you could type text out into. And then um, hopefully you'd prompt engineer the model in such a way that it would pleasantly um, incorporate the information and description of gifty personality into, into the, the model and the model will take advantage of it and return something reasonable. Um, but yeah, it's a super good suggestion. I'm not sure it's a, it's a bit too stressful to like do it live uh, unless people want me to, but otherwise this is, this is like the precise flow that you'd use. And then Let's do uh, it. I mean, if it breaks, it breaks. But um, okay, yeah, okay, okay. okay. Aaron's I need in love with the with the use case, and he can see it. You know, going then, into the infinity. <laughs> okay, then I need then I need suggestions for how to how to prompt engineer it nicely. So I don't want to do just. So here's what the present for Vladimir should be. Uh, know that Vladimir is somewhat aggressive and enjoys warfare. Um, his present should be a humble proportion that should up. Um, what's, what's another thing I could write? And in the meantime, um, here. Is this? Oh, so you want to create a description for, for another example for the model? Yeah. Let's start with a name, maybe. Yeah, actually, maybe we can just we can just try this as is and see how well it works just with just with Vladimir, expecting expecting nothing. Um, so here, prompt. Um, so here we want to do prompt equals prompt replace, and then. Uh, This with the personality. Let's see. Hopefully, this is good. No, what did I break? Text input placeholder. What did I break? No worries, totally normal, especially when you do something live. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's the not helpful thing about Streamlit. They don't tell you what the error is. Okay, I have no idea what's wrong with this.
Oh, I know what's wrong with it. Okay, now let's see. Okay. Um, does anyone? Okay, we'll just try with Kim. Uh, yeah, okay, I think I know what's going on. It wants to, oh, yes, okay. The prompt was wrong. A vanilla latte and a kind note. That that kind of checks out. Yeah, that kind of checks out. An antidepressant and a wrist rest. I don't know about that. A quick ride on a roller coaster. That kind of checks out. Yeah. And so, um, yeah. Hopefully that illustrates that it's relatively quick to iterate on this, and the importance of the prompt. So here it would be definitely better if we kind of came up with if we could guide the model a little bit more with a, with a few more examples um yeah anything else baron sees a potential for a bus busted questionnaire well totally yeah like yeah a BuzzFeed question that's model generated rather than having a human kind of schlep through every uh, every possible combination of the of the multiple choice stuff. Yeah. Okay. Unlimited minutes. Crazy. I, yeah, I have to do it meanwhile because <laughs> I'm on the on the free version right now. Alrighty. Um, questions. Ideas. Does anyone want to help Adrian develop this up further? Aaron has 60 ideas already. Maybe a career field based on their interests. By the way, by the way, feel free to unmute yourself. Um, I think it's possible for you to do that. To say something directly. Oh yeah, I mean like Kohir could act, the AI, AI could act as a consultant maybe. They could just put in their interests on what they like, what they don't like, next match things, and then it would be able to say like what sort of career they could go about with. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I think the point I want to emphasize is like uh, all of this should be built, like all of these are good ideas and should be built. And, and I was thinking about... Um, it's not actually that, exp I was thinking about cost, right? Cause these things, like you think you think of LLMs as, as expensive somehow, but these are this, like using this consistently for a month would be less than 10 bucks probably just cause the generations are pretty short and you can get a million characters for 10 bucks and a million characters is so many characters. Uh, so yeah, like I, I just use, I, I actually do use this casually. Like I'll just, I didn't used to because it was always like I had to go into the into the playground and log in and it would be a, a huge hassle. But this is really just a website on the internet and it has a gross uh, uh, URL, but you can just save it in your phone and then just pull it up on your phone and it is fun to play around with kind of on the subway. And, and the models are kind of strange and magical uh, and fun to play with. So oh, Varun has uh, created a prompt meanwhile. Do you want to test it, Varun, with like adding it to the app? Oh God. Uh, <laughs> oh, okay. Hang on a sec, let me try to screenshot. No, not screenshot. Wait, so <clears throat> given a subject topic or question, I can teach a subject by organizing and explaining it using semantic share maps on method, uh, case and simple language. Wait, I don't think I understand. Me neither. Explain language and communication, long and detailed explanation using semantics and examples. Um, wait, okay, I, for what, this, my challenge to you uh, is to 
<laughs> is to turn this into a streamlet, like uh, play around with the model and make it consistently get good results and then turn it into a streamlet and then send it to us. Yes, and my, my suggestion would be to um, try to use as simple language as possible. Um, ideally like everyday language because um, the model will probably feel comfortable with that and will give you nice outputs as well. So try to um, talk to it as if you are talking to a friend in a bar, let's say, uh, with the same type of task and you should get a nice result, hopefully. Yeah, totally. Varun, please actually do it. It would be so fun. Yes. Um, Nick is suggesting that um, we should dedicate to that a collab session itself, and I agree. So <laughs> as soon as you're ready, Varun, um, I am booking you as a guest host. OK, awesome. So we're waiting in that case. Um, do you have any more questions to Adrian? Krista loves it um, and asks if your code is available on GitHub. Uh, says she or he or they, I'm not sure who you are, uh, are a newbie, but they are inspired. Um, is my code on GitHub by chance? Uh, no, but it should be. You're right. It really should be. I'll put it on GitHub. Uh, I think, yeah, th there should definitely just be a, a Cohere GitHub that is public uh, where all this can happen, yeah. Um, but just to reiterate, the code is so simple. This is this is like this is technically 56 lines of code, but if you remove this, it's 25 lines of code. And this is kind of intentionally uh, new lines up, but it's like impossibly simple to code. Krista, are you thinking of any um, app of your own to build with this code? Meanwhile, Baron is coming up with a new prompt. <laughs> okay, Krista wants to generate short um, bias based on personality traits for social media. Um, yeah, that makes sense. Like the model has probably read a bunch of bios and um, I, yeah, yeah, I think, I think, I think that would likely work. Just may, maybe one suggestion or um, maybe to, to elaborate a tiny bit on how I got these prompts. I iterated on the prompts in the playground. So um, where's the playground? Uh, so I went here and then kind of fiddled around uh, here and just like type stuff out and then hit generate quickly and put, set a low number of tokens so I could go quickly. Um, and then once I had a happy, um, a happy generation, I uh, ported this over to the streamlet and started generating from it more consistently. But the the, the flow is really like, you know, stuff stuff happens here, and um, and then later on, uh, you move you move to the streamlet. Rakan has a suggestion. Rakan, you want to share it yourself? Of course, uh, it's regarding the um, name use cases, uh, especially the uh, the baby names. Uh, usually, the names um, have um, unique name, uh, unique meanings, actual meanings. So maybe uh, this is to be evaluated with the suggested names to see if there is an actual meaning uh, for that name, given the culture, given the the structure of the name, the um, actual use or the, or the existing uh, the frequency of the uh, known uh, individuals having that, that names, all of these factors and other factors to be considered to evaluate if the suggested name would be an applicable name 
for a human being or just a random name? Um, yeah, uh, you could, yeah, get the generation and then hook that up to a further thing based on what you care about. So if you care about kind of it existing already, that works. If you care about something else, then you can you can also kind of write some code to, to make it work. But um, the idea is not always to have something to, um, associated with existing names or meaningful names, uh, because sometimes we are looking to have a, a very unique or weird name for like, um, let, let's say for a brand or for logo or for um, company name or something. We, you would like to have this kind of uh, unique unknown name for that uh, kind of uh, generation. But in some um, applications or use cases, you are really concerned about the name uh, the meaning of the name, let's say, or you would like to have a meaningful name. So maybe these two tracks to be considered given the use case that we are looking for. Totes. Um, yeah, one thing, one thing that reminds me of, uh, there's a, one of these things, we haven't, we haven't actually gone through this. One of these is a, suggest movies basically. So if you, um, what type of movie did you like? Third date. Ah. Uh, Streamlit has found product market fit and keeps crashing. Um, so, so this doesn't just suggest a movie; it also suggests why you should watch that particular movie. So, um, with a person still getting to know, I would watch The Prestige. Uh, it's a movie that provides great insight into relationship between two magicians and the tension and intrigue develop that develops between them. And um, you can see that it tries to justify its reasoning. And that's something that I think Jay has done a lot of its racing on. It's like, not only can the model kind of try to give an answer, if you prompt engineer it correctly, it will also try to justify its answer. And the way, and you could like not only generate kind of names, just the names, but if you have in the prompt, justification for why the name for what the name would mean or um why you pick the name that why those two people pick the name that they picked then when you hit a new generation it will the model will try to justify um why it picked the name that it did and that might be fun and interesting and cool and re related to what you were talking about yeah, excellent point thank you um, Chris, do I want to share your comment? Sure, yeah, I was saying it could be a great, possibly write really good outbound sales emails if you enter information about the company and what you might be selling them and their title. They're short and sweet. Totally, yeah, that sounds <clears throat> um, very plausible. I think, I think there are already companies at least attempting to do this. Uh, yeah. But it's a good idea. Uh, yes, yes, there are companies that are trying to um, personalize emails uh, using large language models. Um, yes, because we had a question before about what kind of use cases we could, you know, see in the in the context of finance or insurance or healthcare, and like in, in this bigger enterprise type of um, organizations, how we could use that prompt engineering for their success. Yeah, I'm, I'm not entirely, like I don't work in those industries so nothing um, springs immediately to the mind. I think the main thing or the, the kind of primary response is um, just if, you, if you're someone who works in, in one of those fields uh, in, in, a, in a group or something, um, just it, this is basically just like, it's just a, a little widget, like a little tool that you can build really easily and then put up online, um, for, for consumption from your, um, colleagues. And if you get feedback, like if you make a little thing and then, um, it doesn't have to take long to make that little thing. It can be super easy. And if you make a little thing and that thing proves useful to other people in your company, uh, or, or your community or something, then that's awesome. Then you do more of that. Uh, but I think this tech is so new and strange that nobody has really uh, 
clear and crisp ideas for how to for how to use it um yet and so everything is still kind of very experimental and you can be the person that figures out like oh yeah this is this is this is the correct thing to use it for for finance or insurance or healthcare um and it doesn't have to be a huge heavy lift it can just be like um like all of these took me um like half a day total and it was mostly just coming up with prompts and once i got into the groove of coming up with prompts it was easy i would say on that on that uh, note like some of the use cases like we've seen is like extraction from from contracts for example and that is that translates to just a a prompt like this with, with examples of a contract and the kind of entity or piece of piece of information you want to extract from it um and it, it works in the exact same way just give it three four examples experiment with it and it can you know hand it to that fourth um, article or contract um, and it's able to sort of uh, pull that from for you. So summarization is also that same prompt structure. Examples with a structure, input, output, input, output, and then you give it the real input that you want it to, to do and it, it will. Um, so a lot of problems can be sort of translated into this simple uh, structure of uh, a structured uh, prompt with examples. Thanks so much, Jay. One, one additional thing, I'm going to post the Cohere samples um, repo, um, and this would be a good place to uh, post it, Adrian. Um, it, it's for the folks, folks to watch it and uh, keep an eye out on the code whenever we release. Cool, that That's sounds good. Awesome. I, will, I will add it here. Yeah, I'll post it also on our Discord and let you know when, when it's added. So you can check it out. Cool. All righty. Um, so um, unless we don't have any more questions, I think we can wrap up uh, our session. That would be good because I have to run to an interview. Yeah, alrighty. Okay, thank you so much, Adrian. This was super, super fun. It's been super fun also seeing you actually sort of, you know, at work, like in the depth. I mean, the depth, like considering it has just like a couple of lines, but in the depth of your code and like actually, you know, tweaking it live, it was super cool. Um, there's one follow-up question to Jay, actually. So in case again, you, you've got to run, uh, you can. Thank you so much for your presentation. Jay, the, yeah. question, the question would yeah. be, <laughs> yeah. Um, so just, yeah, quick uh, answer to the to the question, Ilan. That's, the, the question is really depends. Like you, you wanna try with a few examples first, three examples, maybe five examples, uh, but it, like extraction, is a task that is different in terms of how, how complex it is. Um, so if it's too complex, you might even have to fine tune a model with, with a lot a lot more examples. But uh, the general recipe for, for this is yes, you know, you try with five examples, 10 examples. Um, if 10 or 20 examples start to fill up the, the, the context of the amount of tokens that you can push through the model, you might have to fine tune and, and get sort of more um, more examples that way. Thank you, Jay. Um, Nick, do you want to share your point with, with Krista? Oh yeah, just briefly. I know we're about to wrap up, but Krista, I think you made a comment earlier about uh, our model's ability to generate like a LinkedIn, a Tinder or Twitter bio. And I just mocked up a simple preset, uh, which is like a shareable prompt in our interface to do exactly that, just to give you an example of how that might work. So this one includes a few examples of names, the platform you're generating for and the job and the bio. And as you can see, like, if you have an account and you enter the playground and you simply hit generate, you'll see what it's capable of. That's so cool. Thank you. See if yeah, I can yeah, hold of it course. into Streamlit. 
<laughs> exactly. Thank you. Alrighty. Um, so thank you so much for um, joining today. Thank you so much for participating. Sorry about the incident. Um, I'm still figuring out the Zoom, but hopefully next time we will have like a nice moderation layer. Um, take care, you guys. Have a great weekend. Stay tuned to our Discord and uh, take care.